Ah, absolutely phenomenal. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Amir Masumian and this is Flash in a Pan, the only show where magic happens in a pan and goes on your plate. Today we're going to be making chicken tikka masala. As you can see here, it's paste essentially, some chicken, rice, almonds and coriander. So let's get started. Assalamualaikum, welcome to Flash in a Pan, the only cooking show where we put magic in a pan and put it on a plate. Amazing. Today I'm going to teach you how to make chicken tikka masala. Now the recipe here is a bit lighter than usual, a little bit more delicate, and uh, you can just customize however you like. Let's get going. So first off, naturally we can take some already made paste, mix it up with some chicken and some onion, and then hit it up like that. But what we're going to do today is actually make the paste itself. And to do this, we need some coriander seeds and some cumin seeds. So let's go to the station. So that's just one tablespoon of coriander seeds. Voila. It smells fantastic already, but it's going to smell even better when it's on. And just one tablespoon of cumin seed. Um, just keep that going for about a minute or so, just so the entire kitchen gets the lovely flavour and aroma of cumin seeds and coriander seeds. Alright, phenomenal. Now that we have it, there we go. We need to put it in a blender. I know it looks small, but it's very powerful. So you just pour it in. Beautiful. And up come the next ingredients, which will be your coriander. Beautiful. Garlic and some ginger from here. And a knife would also help. So what we're gonna do is just cut off the coriander heads and try and keep the stalks for later. So all of these stalks, usually people throw them away, but I'm gonna teach you a little trick in a while to so keep them spare and just cut up some coriander leaves. About a handful like this should be enough. Put them in. Voila. Garlic. Cut one in. Cut them through. There must be a fancier way of doing this. Sorry guys, really. I've been told many times garlic, onion, and ginger are the main recipes for any good Indian recipe. Skin. About this much is enough. And now come the technicals. As you can see here, my bird is keeping some protection over all of the main ingredients. So as we have here, some paprika. There we go. Pretty difficult stuff to get out. Give it a bit of a shake before putting it in. About, about one teaspoon. We have some garam masala and this is pretty much the heart of any Indian recipe. I think you can definitely find it at any good store. One tablespoon. We have here the cayenne pepper, which a colleague of mine thought it was cyan pepper, which was pretty fun. We have just about half a tablespoon, just about, this is a pretty big spoon to be honest. But um, just go, go with the flavors. It all smells pretty fantastic. Um, here comes some ground uh, almonds, which we grounded up earlier. Be very generous with this one. And if you just look here, it kind of looks kind of funny, but in a moment, it's gonna look very delicious and very practical. We're also gonna get some dissected coconuts, which uh, is a very, 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 very great smelling thing. So as we have here, we now go over to our main station. 
and blend. Three, two, one. Voila. Oh, doesn't that look amazing? Check that out, guys. Ah, oh, beautiful. Right, so just to add a bit of liquidity, if that's a word, to it, we're gonna take some olive oil and some tomato puree. Really important stuff. Just go with the eye, so I'd say around about half a tablespoon should be okay. And two tablespoons of the tomato puree. Should be cool. Back to our station. At the end, it should give some kind of look like this. Now, this looks a little bit dry, as you can see, so I'm just gonna add it just a little bit more oil to spice things up a little bit, make it more liquid. And now we're off to our chicken. Right, I hope you kept the stalks I spoke about earlier. Uh, we're gonna come, those are gonna come in handy now, so just give me one sec. We have some onions here. And this is just gonna be something to spice the chicken up while it's cooking. Immunity from years of onion cutting. It's a pretty good skill to have. Um, these are quite small onions, but I'm pretty sure at home you can get bigger ones. I think they're called Spanish onions. They look like the globe. So cut off from both sides. you simply cut them along and because they're pretty heat resistant they can go along with the onion pretty good and it tastes absolutely amazing voila now for the onion i'm the slowest cutter on earth but i please do not replicate this spice it up however you want if you want to use red onion you can use red onion and uh, the main thing that varies is coming up in a short while and that is the red chilies so I'm a pretty mild guy myself, but if you are someone who requires a bit more spice in life, so as we have our onions cut up, I'm gonna use these very two cute little red peppers, as you can see inside that counts. Voila. So all of these look pretty separate at the moment. Let's put them on the frying pan. As we come here, voila. Get them all in a pile like this. I personally add the oil a little bit later on, but that's totally up to you. Oh, voila. Right, so let's hit it up. All right, just a bit of higher temperature. Don't be afraid. Oh man, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Got a concoction of colors going on. Oh, beautiful, look at that, guys. Wait for it to turn a little bit golden and you should be okay from then onwards. Fantastic. All right, guys, let's go on to the chicken. All right, so we get two chicken breasts, absolutely gorgeous, and we just dice them up to however much we want, really. I usually get pieces about this big. That should be okay for me but it's up to you if you're cooking for a family, if you're cooking just for yourself. This is mostly bachelor food for me, really. Look at this. I just got someone to sharpen the blade and it did actually work. Wow, wow, look at the speed. It's honestly doubled. If you can get, wow, if you can get a professional blade sharpener around you, definitely allow them to get near your knife. It really helps with the process. Mm -hmm. Always keep an eye on your onion as well. Make sure it's going going well. You don't want crispy onion in your chicken tikka, chicken tikka masala. Right, that should be all right. So now we add the chicken to your kind of bronzed onion. Voila. Beautiful. And remember the paste you labored on earlier. That's when this comes in handy. Excuse me, technical difficulties. Ah, voila. 
bring it through. Now we just put it in. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Give it a bit of a stir, as you would. If you can also make some extra chicken tikka uh, paste, you can always put it in the fridge. It usually lasts up to about three weeks. So happy days. I wish the cameraman could smell this if they came through. This would be amazing. So now what we're gonna do is crack open some coconut milk and some tin tomatoes. You can get them at any shop through. Alright guys, even though it smells pretty fantastic, it's going to smell even, with, uh, even better now. You get half of a can of coconut milk and half a can of your tomato, uh, chopped up tomatoes in a tin. Go ahead and pour that through. You want to come take the shot. Oh, phenomenal, look at this. And a half of these. Absolutely brilliant. And this is where it's starting to look like a chicken tikka masala. Ah, fantastic. Isn't that beautiful? Right. Righto, now, now it looks like a proper chicken tikka masala. Finally, after all this effort we went through, we have it. Now all, we, now all that is needed is for us to say goodnight and close the lid. 20 minutes of peace and silence and just let it simmer. All right guys, it's been 10 minutes. We're gonna see how it's going. Oh, look at that. Wow. All the flavors are mixing up very nicely. Make sure that the end isn't going too crispy. You're gonna need to lower the temperature and maybe add some more water if that is the case, but look at that. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Well done. All right, another 10 minutes and it should be okay. It should be okay to eat. Ah, absolutely fantastic. The chicken tikka masala is coming along very nicely. It's bubbling up, steaming up. And if the bottom bit, the base is getting a little bit too crispy, you can definitely just reduce the temperature, add a little bit of water, and it should be absolutely fantastic. But look at that. I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of myself. 10 more minutes and it should be cool. Right guys, mystical beings have managed to produce some amazing pilau rice, as you can see here. Phenomenal. And now we're gonna add the final and main ingredient, which is the chicken tikka masala. Woo! Way too gorgeous, way too beautiful. We're gonna place it right through, right here on the side. Just like that. Voila. I'm gonna add a dollop of yogurt for taste and for a bit of aesthetic. Voila. Get some coriander leaves. Remember, we used the stalks, but now we can use the main part of it as well. Voila. And this is just a personal touch from me, which is the actual almond. Voila. There we go, chicken tikka masala done in 45 minutes. Really, really quick, really, really fluffy, beautiful. Absolutely fantastic food done real quick. Check it out.